Hello class, welcome back. So now that we're able to uh, select the user and fetch the messages between us and them and uh, read the messages, uh, let's, before we um, style anything or improve the functionality, let's divvy up the functionality of this uh, homepage into multiple components. Uh, because I know we're gonna write uh, more code and right now if we go to the uh, source folder in the client directory and go to the homepage, you'll see that, you know, as you've uh, written so far, the whole code is here. And I know we're gonna write more code and of course it doesn't make sense to keep it all here. So let's create um, a couple of components for the different parts of this page. All right, so the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna separate the user section into its own component and then this messages section into its own component inside of the home page. So here, I'm actually gonna create a new folder inside of pages and call it home and uh, put the home.js file in it and all the components that belong to this page will be in this uh, folder. So let's make sure that the um, the import for this are, are fixed. So I think we have an import here. Yeah, so here where we import the page um, home, we need to say slash home with lower ooh, lowercase uh, h and then slash uh, home like this. So let's save that. And uh, in our home.js, make sure that, okay, so this has changed automatically. If it hasn't for you, then add dot dot slash to go back one more level to get the auth context. So now I'm gonna create actually two more files here. So there will be the users for the users section and there will be the um, messages for the messages section. So here for the users, we need to, let's cut to this uh, get users query. And uh, let's take it here. Actually here, let's do RFC and it will create a functional component. And here I'll paste that query and uh, let's bring everything that relates to the users. So you got the query and um, we need to use um, use query. So I'll co copy that import and uh, remove use lazy query because we don't need that here. And uh, let's see here what we need. So we got, um, yeah, down here, all of this, the users markup. So cut that out and go to the users and here paste it here. And uh, then we need to return the column that represents the users section, which would be this one right here. So I'll cut this and in its place, I'm gonna um, type users as a component like this and uh, we need to import it. So let's go here and say import users from the same directory slash users like this. And now we need to go here and paste what we just copied. And for this to work, we need to get column from um, React Bootstrap. So let's do import, import call from React Bootstrap. And uh, we're gonna need a couple of other things, I believe, because we're gonna need to cut this, actually not this, um, just this uh, use query call and paste it here. And what else? I think that's it. That should be it, yeah. I'm gonna remove this console log because uh, we already tested that, that works. And it should be it for now. I'm gonna remove these unused imports. So use query and image. Those are in the users now. So I'll save this and let's go to users. Um, I'll just save this and see what happens in the console. Okay, we need the selected user, uh, the set selected user and the image. So the image comes from React Bootstrap, that's simple. We add it there. And for the set selected user, we can actually just pass this down. I'm going to change that in a second in this video, but I'm just going to pass it down just to test that everything works. So here in the users, we can pass it as a prop. So sele um, set selected user equals um, set selected user like this. And of course we need to destructure it. So here from the props, uh, let's destructure. Actually, I'm just going to paste that. So set selected user, uh, save. All right, so uh, everything's running. I'm gonna check if it's actually working. All right, and it is. So we have the user section and it's actually um, setting the user uh, upwards. So it's uh, calling this setter and that's actually changing the um, this state variable here, the selected user, and that's working for messages. Okay, let's refactor messages as well. Um, but actually before I wanna uh, I do that, I wanna create a context for messages because Right now, obviously this is not a good practice to pass this set selected users, because let's say, for example, inside of this users, we want to have another component. We don't want to also pass another prop inside, which is called prop drilling. So instead we can create another context like auth context and manage messages there. 
So I'm going to do exactly that. Let's go to the auth context, um, sorry, the context directory. And let's create here a new file called message.js. And I'm going to actually copy the auth uh, context, all of it, and uh, so that to save time, so I'll paste it here. I'm going to change a bunch of stuff. So inside of this uh, switch, I'm going to remove both these cases and leave the default case as it is. And here I'm going to remove the import for JWT and also remove check-in for the user. And uh, here I'll remove the uh, rename these two. So control D and change this to uh, message. So you have message state context and message dispatch context. That's fine. And here I'll rename this to message reducer. I'll copy that and paste it here. And I'll rename this provider to, ooh, I'm actually going to control D, select everything that is named auth and change all of them to message with capital M. But I'm going to need to change, okay, this is fine. That's fine. And that's fine. Actually, actually, I think everything is fine. We don't need to rename anything anymore. Oh, except here in inside of the, um, the uh, default state, the initial state, it will not be users. It will actually uh, use it. It will actually be users uh, because we're going to fetch um, the users initially and then we're going to store them here. And each time we fetch messages uh, between us and one other user, we're going to add those messages inside of that user object. You, you, it, will make sense, um, it will make sense in a second if I can talk. All right, now we need to uh, give this provider to our uh, app.js. So let's go to our app.js. And here we need to import it. So I'm just going to duplicate this. Uh, the auth provider and change this to message except here it's lowercase and we just need to inside the auth provider in case later we need the auth data it needs to be inside of here we'll say uh, message ooh, message provider close that and take this closing tag and uh, cut it and paste it here and save and now we should have actually a context with the users that should be null Actually, I'm going to set this to um, null because there's no variable here that's called users. And uh, let's look at our console. Cool, no errors. Let's look at our browser. And here, if you go to the components, the React DevTools, you'll see that there is a message provider. And there is, of course, two context providers. The inner one has a value of users null. All right, so we have our context. Now, let's actually start to use it. So let's go back. I'm going to close this. Can I start by writing a, uh, where is the context here? Oh, not this one, this one. I'm going to start by writing um, the cases that we have, and uh, I'll show you the methodology that I'm going to use here. It's very simple. So here the first case will be a case set users, which does exactly that. Uh, it will return an object, it will spread the existing state, and uh, we will set the users key to the payload that we received. So that will be action payload and uh, this will happen when we fetch the users uh, we can actually start to use this already so let's save and uh, we can go to the users uh, component and uh, here once this query executes we can um, add this data to that uh, context and then consume it so actually instead of destructuring it like this we can use a different approach so to, to ensure that it executes once I'm going to use the uncompleted um, callback inside of the options array and here this takes a data uh, object and then once we get that data actually we need to import our dispatch to dispatch actions so here i'll say import and this this structure what is it um is it i think it's message should be message auth dispatch not auth sorry message no sorry it's a hook use message Okay, I'm just going to look at it because uh, I have a golden fish memory right now. Yeah, it's use uh, message dispatch. <laughs> okay, use message dispatch from, and uh, that will be two levels back, I believe. Yeah, context slash message. And uh, now we need to just use that hook. So we'll say dispatch. Oh, what is that? Dispatch uh, equals use message dispatch like this. And so once we get the data from this query, we simply say dispatch or type, um, and the type will be set users like this, and the payload would be data dot get users because that's the name of the query. And we can also add uh, the on error callback in case an error happens. 
uh, which take the, takes the error and we'll just simply console log uh, the error. And um, that should be fine. Actually, it would not be fine because uh, here our page doesn't know what data is. So we need to get the data from the context. And that's simple. We can just uh, get the other hook. I'm just going to double check again. Yeah, use message state. Um, all right, so here I'll add it there. And uh, I'll get the state. So const state equals, or actually I can just destructure the users. So const um, users equals use message state like this as a function. And uh, now, so at the beginning, this, um, this users will be null. And uh, once we get users, of course, it will be an array of users or an empty array. So here, uh, instead of data.getUsers, that will simply now, so select this data.getUsers and click Control D twice and replace both of these with just users. And uh, that will actually do. And here as well, actually, this data is users because that data key doesn't exist anymore. Uh, the loading still exists, so that's fine. We can leave it as it is. And um, everything else should work the same, actually. So let's save. And let's check the console, no errors, cool. I'm going to go back to the app, refresh. I'm going to open the context here. And OK, OK, so we get our users once the uh, the page loads. So that's cool. And um, actually, you know, I click in anything here will not do anything. That's a different functionality. All right, so yeah, that our users context is working. Uh, once that query is called, our context is actually populated. Now we need to uh, separate the messages section into its own component. But actually, before we do that, I want to change this because right now this div, whenever we hover over the text, it gives us like this um, text selection uh, cursor. And I want to change it into like a pointer because this is kind of like a link. I mean, not kind of, it's actually a link. <laughs> so we can simply add, so this div here, we can add a uh, role to it of button and uh, that will take care of it. So now it's, um, it's a pointer cursor each time we hover over this div. Uh, I want to also like give it some background color in when we hover over it to give like some uh, UI feedback. So to do that, I'm actually going to give it a class, a class name, so I can target it by that selector from the CSS or the SAS. I'll call this user dash div, uh, not very creative, but whatever. And uh, I'm going to open the app CSS right here. And down here, I'm going to say dot user dash div colon hover. So when it's hovered, I uh, will have a background um, background uh, color, Ooh, color, and it will be just a uh, a slightly brighter gray. So that will be 250. So 250 RGB 250 250 250, and let's save all files and uh, let's see what that looks like. There we go. It, it actually like um, kind of changes when we hover over it, and I wanted to also change once it's um, you know. Once we've selected, for example, here boss, and we see the messages, I want it to be selected. So that that should be easy to do just in JavaScript. Um, I'm actually going to install class names to give us like these conditional classes. Uh, so here I'll inside of the client directory. So cd into the client and say npm install uh, class names all lowercase, and I'm going to import it at the top. Uh, oops. You know, I'll say import class names. Actually, I'm gonna camel case this from class names. What is that? <sighs> class names. And um, so down here, uh, here it will be conditional because it's not selected all the time. Um, so how do we gonna do this? Actually, we could get the prop from from the home. So we can just add this, so selected user, just uh, give it to the component so that we can have access to it inside of the users and destructure it as well here, selected user. And then, so this would be, this would be a username, right? So we just need to compare it against the username of this current user. So let's make this into a code block. Um, so here, change this into a, a curly brace and all of this expression needs to be returned and I'll wrap it in parentheses. Um, so here we'll say const oops, const um, selected equals, and we're going to check if the selected user that we have from the uh, as a prop um, equals um, user dot 
username. And now here in the class names, I'm going to cut all of this and open an expression and say class names and open parentheses and curly braces. And actually not curly braces. The first class name will be, um, will be this. And this will not be conditional. This will always be there. But we're going to add a, um, actually, how do we do this? We could, um, we could use a bootstrap class. I think we could use the BG white. So let me check. Yeah, we could use BG white to make it like this, uh, just white, uh, like this section. So here we'll, um, open an object. This means that there's an expression here. And if you give, let's say uh, BG white here and then give it a value, this is a condition. So for example, if you say true, this will always be true. And this, um, actually both of them will have BG white, uh, because it's always true, but now we'll just give the condition as the selected here, which would, could be true or false, depending on whether this is selected or not. So if we go back and then if you select this, it doesn't change. Um, and why is that? Oh, I didn't save the home. All right. It should fix it now. All right, there we go. Now, if you select the user, the background changes uh, permanently. I mean, not permanently, as long as that user is selected. All right, cool. So now we'll refactor the messages section. So um, have I created that? Yeah, okay. So that's created the messages.js. So I'll do, I'll do RFC, RFC tab and uh, let's go to the, uh, the home. I'm going to cut this um, column right here, this call eight. So just cut it and uh, replace it with messages and messages needs the selected user. So I'm going to pass it selected user equals selected user and uh, do a closing tag there or just close it like that. I'm going to duplicate this import and select this and control D and type messages. Now I'll go to messages and I'll return that. Oh, wait, oh, I misclicked, copied something else. I'm just going to revert here. Oh, not here. Oops. So in the home, I'm just going to revert the changes that just to get that block again and uh, copy it and then revert all the changes back and go here and paste it. There we go. And of course here we have, we need the message data. So let's bring that. We need to actually bring the get messages um, query. So let's cut that from there and paste it here. And we need the, actually we can cut this because we don't need these anymore here. So we can paste them here, the, both the, I keep like misclicking, um, copy and it's copying something else. Okay. So we use lazy query. We'll use it here. And what else? So the column is not needed here. I can remove it. And, um, so we can take all of this, including the use effect call, cut it. Let's go to messages, uh, paste it here. And of course we need use effect and, um, yeah, use effect from react. I use, oh, use effect. And we also need the column from React Bootstrap. So I'll say import uh, call from React Bootstrap. Uh, should be fine, I think. Let's look at our console, save all files. And okay, selected user is undefined. Okay, we need to destructure it from the props. So here, selected user save. Um, I'm going to close this actually. All right. It looks like it's fine. So let's refresh this. All right, cool. So we're getting the messages and, uh, it's working. It's actually modular now. And one thing actually, um, I'll show you in case you haven't seen. So if you go to the XHR request section in the network, um, dev tools, if you click on Jane, for example, so it runs the, uh, the query. So it sends a request. And then if you click on boss, it sends a re another request and get the messages. But if you go again to Jane or again to boss, it doesn't change and um, send another request. It's already cached there, which is pretty cool. This like um, uh, Apollo cache optimization that we don't have to worry about. Now, um, one thing that we need to do, we need to get the selected user and the messages as well from the context, because here we're going to have maybe another component, uh, which we will, uh, I know for sure we will have a message component, a single message component, and we don't want to like keep you know, passing these props from the top to the bottom. We want to use the context, like I said. So let's go to our message context. And here I'll add another case here. And this will be case. And this will be called set user, not users, user 
messages. And uh, this does exactly that. This is when you click on a user and you get their messages and you want to set it just to that user inside that state. So this will, this will be a bit more complicated than this one. So what this will get, it will get a payload. Actually, we can destructure this stuff. So we'll get the payload and the payloads will have two keys, the username, uh, username of who this user is. So username and it will get messages as well. And um, equals payload like this, we destructure it. And before we do anything else, actually, I'm going to call it first for it to make sense. So let's go to the messages. Um, so here, actually, we can just grab the imports from here. So I'm just going to cut those or copy those rather. And here we'll need the dispatch. Well, actually, do we need the dispatch from here? Mm, we don't actually. Okay, it's from the users. From the users here, each time we select the user, um, yeah, here, each time we select the user, this should be calling the context instead of calling the um, use state uh, setter from the home page. So we're going to remove this set selected user. So let's remove this line. And we're also going to remove this prop drilling or just this passing this props. This will be in the context now. So remove all of that, which means we don't need use effect and use uh, state here. So we can remove that. And now this needs to be stored in the message context. So what we can do, um, actually it's fine. We can just start to call stuff from users. So here in users, of course, we don't have this set selected users, uh, set selected user, and we don't have these anymore. So we can remove them. What we're going to do instead, we're going to dispatch an action which tells the context to switch to a new user. And then just by switching to that new user, the messages component will be aware of that and fetch the messages between us and that user. And uh, actually, this will require a new type, a new um, action type, which will be actually, I'm going to add it here. So we're not done with this yet, but I'm going to add case um, and I'm going to call this set underscore um, user or set selected user makes more sense. And, um, and let's not worry about it for now. Let's call it first. So here, instead of set selected user like this, we will uh, use the dispatch. So we'll dispatch and uh, an action, which is an object. And the object will be of type set selected user. And the payload will be what we just cut. So the user.username. Let me make sure we have dispatch here. Yeah, we do. Um, so now when we send this action, we need to do something here. So to set a user um, selected, what we can do. So if you go to the context, um, where are we? So uh, message provider. Okay, this one here. So we have our users and each one is an object. We can simply, once we have one selected, we can add to that object a, a key called selected and a value of true to them so that we will know that this is the selected one. For example, for this one, we add selected true or to this one. So let's go here. So when we call a selected um, set selected user, we can say, first of all, we need to make a copy of the user's um, array inside of the state because we can't uh, mutate the state directly. So we'll say users, um, let's say const users copy uh, equals, this will be the, actually we can straight away just use map. So we can say uh, state.users.map and uh, this gets a user and uh, returns, okay, so we'll do parentheses and curly braces to straight away return an object. And uh, here we'll spread this user, uh, uh, dot, 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 user, and here we'll set a selected key and this is conditional. So if the user dot username, um, I might type in users, user dot username um, equals the payload because remember in the payload, so that would be, that would be, where is it here? So the payload would be the username of the user that we want to, to have selected uh, here. If that equals the payload, that means this is in fact the user that we want to select. So this will return true. Otherwise it will return false. That means that's not a selected user. And here we can simply return uh, an object. We spread the existing state and uh, we replace the users with the users copy. And that will actually do the trick. And uh, can we actually test, actually we can test uh, that it's working. So save both. But now here in messages, we need to get that selected user. And uh, we no longer get it from the prop, so we can remove that. And uh, we can actually 
So we have the access to the uh, use message uh, state hook. So we can actually get the state. So let's do it up here. Let's destructure from the state the users and uh, say equals uh, use message state like this. And uh, to get the selected user, uh, we can just loop through the users. So say const selected users equals um, user equals users dot find um, a user where the user um, so that will be where the user dot selected equals true and uh, that's it so this will get us the selected user and down here if we do get a selected user we can now get um, get messages and we'll get the uh, select uh, the from will be selected user dot username like this and otherwise, of course, if it's null at the beginning, we'll not get the messages. And uh, this should work exactly the same as it did before. Let's save all files and uh, check the console. Okay, payload is not defined. Oh, well, that would be... Yeah, so here and here, it will be action.payload. Uh, let's save. Let's look at the console. Selected user is not defined. And uh, that's in messages. Oh, it's actually in users. Uh, where is selected user? Oh yeah, of course, this doesn't exist, so we need to... We can just copy the same logic that we have here and uh, to get the selected user. And... Um, so copy that and go to users, paste it here. We do have the state. Um, yeah, we do have the state here and then selected user equals that. So here we check if the selected user dot username equals user dot username. Let's check, save all files. All right, uh, we get an error. Cannot read property find of null. Um, let's go to a, is that from users or from, yeah, that's from users. Oh, okay, my bad. The users at the beginning is null, so you can't run uh, find on it. Um, one work around, um, around this, actually, we could just add an exclamation mark, which would mean if this actually exists, then run the dot find. Otherwise this will be undefined. So that's, you know, that's one way of doing this. Um, okay. We're getting the same error, <laughs> but from the messages. So let's go to messages and just add exclamation, um, question mark here. And it should work now. All right. So cannot read property username of undefined. Oh yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Because if this is um, if this is undefined, there would be no error here, but there would be an error here. So we can straight away we can straight away get the username here. So the selected user will be the selected user username, and we just compare selected user to the user dot username. But here as well, we can get this. We will get the same error. So add another question mark here, and this would mean if this is valid, then we get this. And then if this is, I mean, not valid, it, truthy. And if this is truthy, we get this. And if the either one is, uh, both of them are not truthy, we just get undefined. So let's copy this and go to messages and paste it here. And make sure where there is selected user here, you don't say dot username because this is already being um, extracted from there. So let's save our files and this time it should work. All right, there we go. We get our users. And first I want to check the context. So the message context in a context provider. So we get our users and let's open both of them. And they don't have a selected. So if I click on boss, there we go. So boss has a selected of true and uh, Jane has a selected of false. And if I click Jane, it switches around. Actually, one thing that I left unfinished is the set user messages because right now we're just fetching them and showing them from the component and not using them from the context. So um, yeah, here set set user messages. So we need to call this and uh, set the messages here and uh, fetch them from the user object. So let's go to messages.js. Actually going to close all the, the ones we're not using. So here in messages.js, and once we fetch the use, uh, the messages, we need to set them in the context. So I'm going to change this selected user. Actually, I'm going to remove this um, uh, .username because we need the object itself. So when we get the selected user, we need to check if the user has messages in the context. If they do already, we don't need to fetch them. That means they've been fetched already. So here in the use effect uh, call, we'll say if selected user, 
and uh, we need to check if they don't have messages and then fetch messages otherwise we don't so we'll say if select user uh, and um, so not selected user um, user dot messages if this key doesn't exist because it could be an empty array so if it doesn't exist then we actually get the messages and uh, we pass that variable and the from will be selected user uh, dot username and we don't have to worry about putting a question mark here because th that would not even go through if that's um, if, if that's undefined. Uh, so that's fine. It will actually get the messages. But when we get the data here from this use lazy query, we need to actually check for it. And once we get that data, we need to set it in the context. So here we'll say uh, we'll have another um, use effect call. So we'll type use effect, and this takes a callback. And here we'll say if Messi uh, get messages. So if that we get the date, actually not get messages. Sorry, um, message messages data. So if messages data, um, then we set the actually not set. We dispatch. Let's dispatch an action, and that will be the action that we haven't finished yet. So this one we're just gonna copy set select um, set user messages. So that's the type. And as you remember that here we have a payload that is an object of a username and messages because the context needs to know um, where to set these messages to which user. So here we'll have a payload and this will be an object and you will have a username. And as the selected user is right here, the username will be selected uh, user dot username. And the payload will be called messages. So this will be messages and this will be the messages data dot get messages because that's where the data is so now this depends on messages data so here let's give a, um, a dependency array and this will have messages data so each time um, each time selected user changes uh, this executes again and each time selected user is changed and it doesn't have messages this is executed to fetch the messages and it sets them for that user and then this whole component re-renders uh, re because this changes. And then we get to the new messages and render them on the component uh, inside of this users. So now in the markup, the data for uh, the data will not be in messages uh, data because actually it will be, but I'm going to use it from the context. So here uh, we'll change this. Actually, I'm going to assign this into a variable at the top. So here we'll say uh, const messages. And this will come from the selected user. So selected user. And uh, let's do that um, question mark to check if this is truthy dot uh, messages. And I would be careful using this operator in vanilla JS, but um, here we're in create react wrap and that uses Babel. So there's so many polyfills and this will be compatible in any browser, I'm sure. So here, um, so we have our messages here. I'm actually going to use a variable for the markup so that we can have we can handle mul multiple states. So I'll say let and uh, I'll call this selected um, chat markup or selected user markup. I mean it's a chat, so I'll just leave it as chat. So selected chat is just the name, and here we'll say if uh, not messages uh, and also not loading. So where's the loading? It's uh, yeah messages loading. So, and also not messages loading, uh, then in this case, we're just gonna, that means we're not loading and there's no messages. So we need to select one of the users. So we'll say the selected chat markup equals uh, a, a paragraph. So P and this will say select, select a friend because they haven't selected anyone yet. And um, else we'll check if messages loading and uh, if that's the case, I'm going to copy this one more time, paste it here, and we'll just say loading. So loading uh, dot dot. Uh, else, if we do get messages, so else if messages, oops, messages dot length equals uh, or bigger than zero. And uh, here we, um, we're just going to do the same logic here. So I'll take the dot map call um, down to, yeah, down to here. I'll just cut it and then cut all of this. I mean, I mean, like uh, remove it, erase it and uh, put selected chat markup. And here we'll be, we'll do selected chat markup equals and uh, we'll loop through the messages. So we'll say messages dot map message and then we get that. 
And now we'll do another else. And this will be if we do get messages and um, it's empty, we, there's no messages between us and this user. So we'll say else if messages dot length uh, equals zero. We'll say, um, let's copy this one more time. Uh, selected chat markup equals, and it will say you are now connected. Uh, send your first message. All right, let's test all of this and let's check the console. There's an error. This patch is not defined and also set user messages is not defined. Oh, oh my bad. I forgot to actually populate the logic for set user messages in the first place. So uh, we'll get the dispatch. So as we have the set message dispatch or use message dispatch hook, we can say const dispatch uh, equals use message dispatch. And here, so the dispatch will work. Oh, I passed this as a variable, so that doesn't exist, but I'll pass it as a string. And uh, now here I need to populate that logic. So what we need to do inside of here, we need to fetch from the users um, inside the state. We need to fetch uh, that user with that username and then populate the key of messages inside of that user. So first we need to make a copy of the users. Um, and I actually um, declare this up here and then populate it. Because even though that this is a switch, if you declare the same variable in two different cases, it's going to complain and say that this has already been declared. So I'll remove the const keyword here and here as well. And here I'll say, let users copy. Um, I can actually just give it a, well, actually I'll just leave it as it is. And here I'll say users copy and uh, spread the state dot users dot 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 state dot users. And here we need to find that user. So I'll say const user um, index equals users copy dot find index. And uh, we'll simply find a, a user where the user dot username equals that username that we got from the payload. So username. And now that we got that their index, we can access that index and uh, set the messages. So we'll say uh, users copy um, and uh, open uh, square brackets. And here the we'll ooh, we'll pass that index. So users copy. What is that? <laughs> User index. Sorry, my autocomplete totally fails sometimes. Uh, equals the messages that we received from the payload. And now we simply return um, an object. So I'll spread the existing state. And uh, users will be users copy. I just realized I made the boo boo. So obviously, here the uh, that will not replace the user with just messages. So we'll do an object and we'll replace it with we spread that. Uh, so we can just tuck, take this uh, and then spread that user and then add uh, messages to it. Messages like this. And uh, that's already in a variable, so we can just leave it like that. And then we um, return and we replace the users with this user's copy. So let's save. And uh, so this will call it. That should work. Let's see. We have no errors. And I got logged out. All right, let me log in. Okay, one through six. It says select a friend, cool. And if we look at the state, we have two users. And of course they don't have messages yet. And if I click on boss, all right. So boss gets a messages array and it has only one message because we have only one message between us and boss. And if I click on Jane, Jane now gets a messages array and that has uh, four messages. All right, so now we're using the messages from the context and uh, they're being showed and now we're just uh, switching uh, users from inside the context and everything is uh, is contained here. All right, so now that we have we have all, all of our messages logic or message context um, encapsulated or abstracted away in the messages context, now we can you know write more you know more components and not have to worry about one big component getting massive or prop drilling or anything. So this was a bit of just refactoring. We didn't change the app itself a lot. But this actually means a lot in the long term. It saves you so much, uh, you know, so much headache down the line. In the next one, we're actually going to be, um, you know, doing some styling and make the messages look way better than just a piece of text. So look forward to that. And please do make sure to like the video and uh, subscribe if you haven't and click the bell. 
it does really help and uh, I do appreciate it. Um, thanks a lot and uh, I will see you in the next one. Cheers.